Gloria! Wait a minute. I already did a video on this one. This is the week of strange Japanese cars. We just finished up on a Gloria video. And now we have Nihao Kailan. No, we really do. Let's head on over to the car. So how many of you remember the cartoon Nihao Kailan? One of my daughters used to watch that when she was younger. This is Kailan, which is, was included with this car, because the car is also Kailan, as denoted on the tag. The customer decided to name their Nissan Figaro, which is what this car is, Kailan. Hey guys, before we get too deep into this video, make sure to go check out Mrs. Wizard's Ways. In the description below, there's a link you can go to. There's some major updates she's got going on with her Z3, and it's alive again. It's back on the road, so make sure to click that link. Man, Mrs. Wizard, this thing's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. <laughs> That's what she said. What was that? That's what she said. Okay, whatever. Anyways, this is a 1991 Nissan Figaro. They can't be any other year because there were no other years. Only 1991. This thing is really, really cool. When Mrs. Wizard gives you guys the tour of the interior, there's going to be so many little things to show you. It is really an awesome little car. Customer had this one shipped in, and they also brought along in their vehicle $10,000 worth of parts. The customer actually followed the tow truck all the way here because the parts boxes and some of the parts are large enough they wouldn't even fit in this car. So he had to hand deliver them in his truck, which is kind of an interesting story. We're going to go over the list of everything we're going to be doing on this car, which is quite a list. But before we dive into that, let's check this thing out. You guys are going to love it. So here we have the beautiful front end of this car. It looks very retro, very cool. This compact two-door hardtop convertible was only produced for one year, like I just mentioned. And that year, there were only 20,000 made in Japan. The car was offered in five colors, emerald green, lapis gray, topaz mist, pale aqua, and pink. They chose these colors to represent the four seasons. Gray represents winter, which I feel is quite accurate. February in Kansas is 90% gray. The top has pillars that are white, and there's a center section of fabric convertible top that can come open and give you some fresh air. The car is based on the March platform and only weighs 1,800 pounds. To help reduce weight, the front fenders are thermal plastic resin. The car is just over 12 feet long and about five and a half feet wide. It has beautiful chrome trim all the way around the car along the lower rocker. The small front oval grill is also chrome, which also houses fog lights. The head and tail lights are classic circle design with chrome bezels. The badge on the front of the car is a fleur-de-lis, which prominently denotes Figaro. But the name Nissan is surprisingly missing on much of the car. It is noted in very small print on the hood badge itself. As you see right there, there's really the only place you will see Nissan denoted on this car. A few accessories that could have been added were a luggage rack, alloy wheels for the 12-inch tires, mud flaps, scuff cups on the door handles, and a parking stick like the one installed on the front passenger corner of this car so you can see where the corner is when you're parking. This car costs 1.87 million Japanese yen, which is about 12,500 US dollars. A comparable Nissan Maxima GXE of the 91 model year was $32,500. This one only being 12.5. Let's go ahead and open the tiny little hood on this thing. Look at that tiny little engine, guys. It's a one liter or 987 cc turbocharged four cylinder that produced 75 horsepower and 78 pound feet of torque. It has a top speed of 100 miles an hour and it averages a little over 32 miles per gallon. Even though this is not a barn burner, it was quite adequate power for a city car. Even Nissan knows that maintenance on this car is crucial. They recommend regular service every 6,000 miles. They also expect timing belt to be changed every four years. It's kind of sounding like Ferrari timing belt maintenance. So I feel like I'm looking at a micro machine here. This thing is very, very small. Here's the tiny little four cylinder. It's about the size of a motorcycle engine, 1,000 cc. A lot of motorcycles have that size. Here's our little turbo. 
You can see the radiator is missing. There is a cooler over there with a fan. I believe there's some hoses or lines, things leaking that are going to be addressed. That's one of the reasons why it's here. We'll talk about the list here in a little bit. But I just wanted to show you guys how small this is, how compact it is. It's really, really cool. I'm really starting to like this car. It's so unique. Do you think it's really neat so far? Really cool car? Wait till Mrs. Wizard show you guys the interior. Let's hop into the interior. Here I am again, sitting on the right-hand side of a car. We haven't had a right-hand drive car in the shop until the Gloria. We just did a review on that. And now here's a second one. But this is one cute little car. It has 73,898 kilometers on that odometer, which is about 46,000 miles. The gauges are individually wrapped in chrome and mounted into a soft feel painted plastic dash. All Figaro's come with ivory seats with gray piping, electric windows, AC, CD player, and bake light style knobs and lots and lots of chrome accents throughout. You can see that the car is a three-speed automatic, which was the only available option for this car. The floor leaves are everywhere within the interior as well. You'll see we have the bumps there on our HVAC system. You'll see on our door pulls on the door card, more floor to leave there, even on the window controls for the electric windows. One thing that does make this car special is it does have the customized special, let me tell you, this was special cup holder. Not very many of them came with that cup holder design and also came with customized floor mats as well. You'll see their floor to on there as well with a Figaro badge as well there. One area that does need to be addressed on the car is the dash has cracked and it is a plastic dash as noted earlier and it just needs to be replaced and that will be something I feel we will be looking at in just a moment. As small as this car is, it actually has a back seat. I wouldn't call it much of a back seat. It does come with seat belts, but it does not come with leg room. So it is back there. It does not look very comfortable at all, but it technically is a four seater car. As we move up, you'll see that the back window is hard glass and you can see the section in the center that does move and all is looking in very, very good shape. See, we've got two locks that we would unlock and it can manually be folded back. And I did say manual and you think, oh no, it's manual, it's not electric. Well, they designed this so well that it can be done very easily and very smooth and slick. As you can see, as we return to our steering wheel, you'll see more fluidly along the spokes of our steering wheel. You'll also see the very delicate wing style stocks attached to the steering wheel. And to the side, there are our warning lights mounted to the dash, just waiting to be illuminated. Have simple switches as well. And again, more of that floor de lis Even the key has a little plastic attachment added to it that says Figaro and has a little tiny little car there as well. One thing you're noticing when you look through the entire section of this car is nowhere in here does it say Nissan. Maybe it'll say that on the underneath. So here's some of the $10,000 worth of parts that we have to go on this tiny little car. A lot of them are from this, you can see, Figaro shop. We have fluids and all kinds of different things. It does include the Nissan Micra shop manual, which is kind of what this car is based on. And it has this folder that the customer has made of all kinds of service information and service records and manuals and just tons and tons of really good information, which is nice because you're not going to look this up online and find much about it. But here's everything we need to know. Kind of a funny story, the fuse panel on the Gloria right behind me is all in Japanese. We actually had to take a picture of the fuse panel and Google Translate, and some of the things that it translated were really strange. Like the light for the ashtray, it called it ashes dish. And there was something on there, we don't even know what it's referring to, but it said aluminum crispy PP. I don't know. Maybe you guys can let us know in the comments what they're talking about. But And there were several other words that just didn't make sense. So. Unfortunately, we don't have the manuals on the Gloria. Well, I don't think we're going to need them, but definitely I'm glad to have them on the Figaro. Now I'm going to go over real quick before we go upstairs and show the other parts. I'll go over what we're doing to this car. 
Water pump, timing belt check, replace, service, install new radiator hose and service, four spark plugs, fuel filter, belts, AC, alternator, power steering, rocker shaft, tension, right engine mount, left gearbox mount, rear engine trans mount, front stabilizer mount, main thermostat housing and gasket, full stainless steel exhaust system, stainless steel parts and pieces, silicone turbo boost hose, install distributor and wires, transmission drain, new gasket and filter service, transmission inhibitor bushes, install new power steering rack, and there's quite a few smaller other things, but there's tons and tons of stuff we're going to be doing to this car. Now we're not restoring this car, but a lot of these things that I just, seems like a long list, is actually just a bunch of simple things to do. It's actually not that hard. Again, he supplied the parts. A customer is very familiar with this car. Very, very familiar. He knows everything about it. Anything you could ever want to know about a Figaro, he could answer the question. He was actually attempting to do some work himself on it, and he broke a bolt off accidentally, and he said, you know what, I'm just going to stop. He actually contemplated shipping it to England to have it worked on, but he found out about Omega Auto Clinic, and he said, you know what, I've heard good things, I'll send it there. And we're very happy that he did. We're going to take care of him and get his Figaro back on the road. Let's head on to the loft. There's a few more parts I want to show you guys before we get that thing on the lift. So you just saw in Mrs. Wizard's interior review that the dash is cracked up. He's included an entire new dash pad. Handbrake and net. I'm not sure what all that is, but more parts in there as well. A lot of these parts we keep up in our loft, which you've seen in the background in a lot of videos. That way they don't get stepped on or broken or ran over or something. Out of sight, out of mind. Let's head on back to the Figaro. One thing that kind of reminds me of a smart car, when you open the door on a smart car, it's this giant hole. Such a small car has such a large opening. I think that the opening for the door is actually normal. It just looks disproportionate to the car because the car is so small. Look at this, guys. It looks like a giant opening, but it's actually not. It's just that the car is so small that the actual opening to get in is larger than a lot of the panels on the car. I'll go grab some help from one of the guys and we'll get this thing pushed onto the lift. It looks like a little frog, Mrs. Wizard. It kind of does. It's, it's a cute little thing. It's very cute. We're going to see some fluid and some things leaking where the customer has been working on it, which is to be expected. But let's take a look under this thing. How did they make a little Figaro? So here's where our radiator was. You can see it was removed, and there's some fluid and things kind of leaking where some work has been done. Here's our little automatic transmission, three-speed, right here. Here's our little one-liter turbo four-cylinder, tiny little oil pan. Check our wheels here. Brakes are like 80% remaining. Struts are good. CV boots are good. Here's our steering rack. You can see why we're doing the rack. The boots are torn. It's also leaking. So that's why the rack was mentioned. Here's our other boot. Everything looks good there. This boot and this boot are good. Strut is good, brakes are good. Everything's very small, Mrs. Wizard. It's quite the little cute car. Here's our little exhaust. Here's our shifter cable. So we see the shifter cable there, but I'm not seeing a catalytic converter, and that's because it's actually at the engine. What's really strange about it is that it looks like cast iron or something. Maybe it's steel, it's just rusted, but there is our little catalytic converter. Here's our fuel tank. Here's our e-brake. Tiny little beam axle there, solid beam axle, which has drum brakes in the back. Good condition struts. It even has four links. You can see the little links there. Struts look good. Everything's dry. There's our spare tire, our little tiny muffler. There's really not much to this car, Mrs. Wizard. No, that's why it probably only cost $12,000 when it was new. Let's take a look at the date code on the tires. 
These tires actually have an icon that looks like the Michelin Man, but it's not. These are made by Powertrack. There's the little muscular guy there. And our date code is showing 17th week of 2022, so they're fairly new. So can you guys imagine going to your local tire shop that's nearby, wherever you live, and saying, hey bro, hook me up with some 12s. They would just look at you, probably with a stoic face like, what? Yeah, man, some 12s. These are some Powertrack Adamus HPs. I don't even know if you could find 12s at a t local tire store here in the United States. You'd have to special order them. Luckily, these are brand new. So let's get this thing on the ground. So Mrs. Wizard actually had to speed that up even more than normal because this thing weighs so little, it took forever for it to go down on the lift. We were actually very worried about getting it on the lift. We wanted to do the four post because we didn't have to worry about jack points at this stage, but the wheel track on it is just enough to fit on the lift. So we had to make sure we got it centered just right. We got our work cut out for us on this thing. Quite a lot to do, quite a lot of parts to put on. No muffler Newton, thanks. But anyways, we're very thankful for the customer trusting us to work on his Figaro. When he emailed me kind of asking about if we'd be interested, which is quite a ways back, I said, definitely, we could take care of you. You could trust us. We will do a good job for you. Once it's arrived, we were all outside at the tow truck going, wow, this thing is so cool. It is a really neat car. I don't know if you consider this JDM, which is Japanese cars. We have one back there, one over there, one over there. And we just finished Euro-Asian Bob's Bushmaster that you guys saw a video on. So I guess it's JDM week here at Omega. That's fine. We're happy to work on them. If you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to work on this really nice Figaro or the Gloria or the Maxima or that we use on the Bushmaster or any car in the shop, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to head on over to Mrs. Wizard's Way. She got some updates on her car. You want to definitely check out what she's got going on there. And make sure to hit the subscribe button here because there's many more cool cars coming, which means more videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.